Good morning, friends. It is great to gather with you today. Uh, Wherever you are, however God finds you, peace and grace to you. Uh, My name is Drew Nichols. I'm the interim pastor at Bayswater Community Church. And it is a privilege and a a real joy to be with the church during this strange season. Uh, We are continuing this week in our series going through Ephesians. And Ephesians is a helpful of a church in development. And during COVID and the lockdowns, it feels a little bit like the rules have changed. Now more than ever, there is a sense in which we need to pivot and with what is happening. And in many ways, in doing this, it will allow us to move in ways, refreshing ways, where we see God working differently and in a new and refreshing and almost prophetic sense. Certainly to be the church is more than just turning up on Sunday. And so as the body of Christ, um, we are about community for those in need and bringing God's kingdom here and now, caring for our neighbourhoods. These are all new things that we can do in this strange and mysterious season. So Paul is in prison writing a letter to the church in Ephesus. This is the church that he began, uh, and we see this in Acts 19. And the church is in the middle of some difficulty. Uh, given the diverse nature of the church, and the, there were some, some, some tough issues that this church was trying to deal with. And one of the big ones was the nature of truth. What is truth? Uh, Ephesus was a wealthy commercial one of the great cities of Asia Minor. And it was sitting on the coast uh, in a very pivotal key place for trade. And so given the money and the wealth that would come with this, you can imagine the diversity of people that would be moving through this port. There will be cultures and money, uh, different types of religion. What we get here is money, power, uh, social freedom and And for the church in Ephesus, they were both Jewish and Gentile, non-Jewish people. And it doesn't take long to realize the complexity that this creates. And so a key issue, as I said before, was truth. What is truth? Should Jewish traditions just continue to be held up and as good practice? Or is God kind of free from all that stuff? We've passed all that old stuff. What does the gospel look like here? And so in chapter 1, verse 10, Paul begins to say uh, and give us a really big picture of what God is doing. God's plan was to bring all people into unity, a big new family, restore and redeem hope and a future, diverse but indeed unified. All are in this together because of Jesus and what he did on the cross. And so it's a little bit messy there. And the challenge we have is that ego always gets in the way of humility and truth. And so they might have been asking, well, how does this work? This sense that we're all here, that God has built us up. You know, I can imagine people saying things like, what about tradition or or membership? You know, what about that I've sat in my entire life. What about those old songs? Why don't we sing those old songs anymore? Perhaps you've heard those conversations at times. But in chapter 4, Paul gets a little bit more... What's this? I urge you, be completely humble and gentle. Bear with one another in love because you are one body and spirit and In verse 3, he says this, do everything you can to be in unity. In other words, step up. Get over the stuff that is... Focus on the singular thing that you have in common, which is the works of Jesus, the Christ, and his Holy Spirit that is indwelling amongst them and... And so in chapter 5, and he starts at verse 1, he says this, 
follow God's example. As dearly loved children and walk in the ways of love, just as Christ loved you and gave for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice. And he goes further. He says, there must not even be a, a hint of immorality or impurity or greed, nor shall there be obscenity, foolish, or coarse language, rather thanksgiving. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for no immoral or impure or greedy person has any inheritance in the kingdom of God. And he finishes with this, for you were once in darkness and now you are in light. So live as children of light. Claiborne uh, says this about a unified church. He says this, God's deepest longing is for the church to be unified as one body. In Jesus' recorded prayer, he prayed that he would become, that, that rather that we would become one as God is one. God has only one church, a collaboration of people from many different branches of Christianity, all of which come from the one trunk. In other words, to know Christ. Christ that sits within community. Then we must sit in a space of unity and diversity. We must sit in the messiness. And as the practice of the church, we choose to be the radical change that we and be in the world. And not because we think it's the latest trend, the best thing that we've just thought about, but because ultimately it's God's great plan for humanity. Now, this is not the only time that the gospel has been messy or a little bit awkward. In the book of Philemon, we have a beautiful story of what the gospel looks like. It's a very short book. I can imagine that you'd almost turn the page and miss it. It's a book of only 25 verses. And it's a short but powerful story about God's great plan for humanity. Philemon is a wealthy person from a, a church community in Colossae. Um, and he had a slave called Onesimus. And so it's helpful here just to give us context. Um, to be a slave in this culture was very, very different from the slave trades of the 16th or 17th uh, centuries. Uh, indeed, to be a slave was to be a close personal servant of the family. It was to be in partnership almost with the family that you worked for. Uh, in any case, something happens, uh, possibly an argument or a theft. We, we really don't know. Dismiss the slave, he runs away and in shame and guilt. And somehow he finds himself with Paul in Rome who is in prison. And Paul, who knew this community, he writes to the master, Philemon. And in verse 12, he says this, I am sending him back to you. I ask that you have him back, no longer as a slave, as a dear and beloved brother. Now, you might be confused here. Perhaps you think that Paul has gone a little bit crazy. Uh, perhaps prison has somewhat messed with him. Um, if you have run away, ashamed, guilty, uh, ashamed of your actions, a feeling like you have been kicked out of a community. There is no way that you think that you can be welcomed, let alone to be welcomed back as more than just a slave. This is not something that happens in this context. The slave here has clearly done something wrong. Paul, in his own words to the church in Ephesus, he says this, you were once in darkness, but now you are in light. So live as children of the light. The love of Jesus is radical. As Paul writes um, further on in, in, in chapter 4, do everything 
that you can to be in unity with one another in love. This is the messiness of the gospel here and now in its context. And so for Paul, this is the nuts of community. This is how we change the world. I have here a, a block of Jenga, and I'm sure that many of you have, um, have used this um, over the years. Sometimes these towers can have... So for me, when I look at this tower, I think it's, it's a symbol of community. Um, everybody has a different place. Everybody is, is holding the pressure differently. But sometimes what can happen in is there can be there can be greed. Or sometimes there can be mistrust. Sometimes it can be with chairs. You know, I don't like those chairs. I want those ones over there. We don't have these chairs in our church. Or sometimes it can be issues with Songs. I mean, how many times have we had that conversation of dividing us? Sometimes it can actually be evil that can be in our churches. Sometimes it can be gossip, it can be control. And sometimes our churches of pain and evil and exclusion. And so what happens if I'm to look at this uh, Jenga tower? What can happen is exactly this. We become unstable. We don't dwell in unity anymore. We don't live as children of the light. We live in the same context as Philemon and Onesimus. We create this where shame has no place. Reconciliation has no place. But actually, what Jesus calls us to do when we see this through the words of Paul, Paul calls us to be restorative where we believe in rebuilding story. We believe in redeeming people, people having a sense of redemption about themselves. Communities are places of hope and grace and transformation. Restorative communities are places where the gospel, the good news, is tangible. And the gospel, when it's at its best, is a place of transformation and hope. But the cost of true community, sometimes we have to bear with one another's burdens and show grace where so often we don't want to show grace. Sometimes in some communities, like the Jenga Tower, it but restorative communities choose intentionally that there is always hope. We bear with one another's burdens. And so perhaps for you, you might be asking, what is the point of us talking about this time of COVID? What relevance does this have for us? Well, right now, we are going through extraordinary times. As a country, and indeed as a world, we have never been here before. This is completely new territory for us, both economically, but also as a faith community. And for Baronia churches, the church is different. Our community meals, however, continue to operate. Our community prayers continue to happen. Our small groups continue to function. The church hasn't really stopped in lockdown. The gospel has not stopped. And while there are many things that are frustrating in this time and difficult to manage, such as Zoom and a bad internet, it's horrible, isn't it? It's frustrating. Or even not even being able to hear on Zoom either for small groups. Sometimes it's even just hard to connect to a screen and pray with people. Yeah, we, we get that this is a difficult space. But as a community, we have this extraordinary space to connect, care and support for our neighbourhood that we have never been able to do 
before. And I'm not just talking about our church family either. I'm speaking about the family next door that doesn't know Jesus. The person over the road who has run out of food or needs an extra meal. You know, this is called being the body of Christ. This is called being able to physically meet needs where they are at and rebuild the Jenga story. So friends, may we be reminded that God is shaping us through this time. May we be reminded that he has not forgotten us. No, friends, he is walking with us through this time. May you know that your community needs you. It needs you and it needs you to care for them. And may we be restorative, radical communities where the words of Jesus are indeed written on our hearts and through our actions. So a benediction for us. Chapter 5. May you be filled with the Spirit and speak to one another in psalms and hymns and songs from the Spirit. May you sing and make heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God, the Father of everything, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessings and peace, dear friends, as you go out this week.